Hi, welcome to another Lewis Art video. I'm excited about today um, because uh, this is the first time I'm actually going plain air painting with someone else. I've got uh, a good friend of mine, Mike, today, and we're out. He's shown me a couple of spots down here, um, which basically runs between Appledore and Biddeford. I've known Mike for a long time, and uh, it was great. I bumped into him recently, got talking about plain air painting. Um, was enthusiastic wanted to join in and so um, he's got himself set up today we'll go down and have a look and see what he's up to so I can see Mike he's just behind this amazing look at this tree look at this tree he's just behind this amazing tree he sat over there honestly he's built himself an easel he set himself up he's got a better setup than me and he's been doing it well this is his first session I can't believe it let's go say hi uh, and there he is hello Mike hi. <laughs> hello awesome Look at this setup already. Should be on this side. <laughs> so, so Mike, have you just had a coffee already? I have. <laughs> I needed it. I was going to say, to be fair, look, I, I don't even have a chair. I, I am so you've shown me up here. <laughs> I, tell you what, I, I should have got a couple of these. I bought this recently. Bag. So let's have a look. Fits into that bag just nicely. You know, like that. That's crazy. How much? Three pounds. Oh, you see, I could that would fit in my bag too, wouldn't it? it would, yeah. yeah. It would go into your diesel bag. It, it would. That's brilliant. Do you know what? We we got to have a look at your setup now because this is because you've put it together yourself, mate. <laughs> this is just amazing. Look at it. It's just amazing, and it looks so much lighter than mine as well. Go on, talk us for it. Talk us for it. Well, the yeah, the the tripod obviously is lighter, but uh, I, I wanted some means of fixing this to the tripod. This is the pallet, which is just a piece of Formica covered uh, uh, MDF. It's too heavy actually, a piece of plywood would, would be better. But I've seen um, a better fitting where it would fit like this with a piece of wood the other side of that, so it naturally drops to a place where it won't go any further. Yeah. So you can slot it in, drop it. So you can just slot it in and, and that's it. And then so you've got your, your panel board. Yeah, just I've, ju I've just got a piece of plywood here. Um, Look at that. And I've made a, a device to uh, fit onto the camera mount. It's just screwed onto the camera mount. A uh, couple of elastic bands. Oh, that's just brilliant. And there you go. So this is what we're looking at. Uh, absolutely fantastic down here there's so many possibilities um, in all sorts of directions if I walk down a bit further this way sorry about the wonky camera but I, f I figure it's the best way to do it today if you walk down a bit further this way you've got the the bridge the new bridge over there and it just keeps going on and on and on it's just incredible there's so much uh, to look at so much so much here it's awesome and uh, yeah I'm, I'm really grateful for Mike for, for one coming along today and two just for showing me this place so I can come back here in the future absolutely awesome now initially I was thinking about this view going through across here with a little blue uh, building there and then up into that open plain there and the clouds in behind and so on and so on but I think I'm going to push myself a little bit with something slightly more challenging and I'll show you that now. So I kind of like the green in the front, in the foreground here, then that sort of the, the old boat in the middle there and then looking out to Insto in the back there and then there's even some hills over in the far left here that are sort of further us, filled us again with uh, the windmills in I don't think I'll get any of that in in terms of detail but I I'm sort of kind of liking that view down if I can find a sort of in this way it sort of it paths in uh, to the picture it's like you can walk along here the other way I think just cut the water across too much um, and I'm thinking that maybe something like this will be where I go so I'm going to take a photo and then uh, then we're going to get the easel set up
And uh, the canvas I'm using today is an 8x10 canvas panel, 100% cotton, 8 ounce primed, bloody blah 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 blah. Oh, and here comes the rain. So there we are, as usual, set up in the back here, the bin through the middle, a uh, bit of paint there in the pot there, um, some turfs to clean my brushes, uh, that one already needs a clean, um, my tub for my brushes and my palette knives, and um, some spare cloths, got some tissues, rubber gloves, liquid. Uh, let's have a look at today's palette. So to kick off today, I've got titanium white, ultramarine blue, uh, burnt sienna, yellow ochre, cadmium lemon, and permanent alizarin crimson. And I'll, I'll possibly add to that as we go, um, but that's what I'm gonna start with. So I've, sneak, I've, got, I've had a sneak uh, round <laughs> to see how Mike's getting on. He's not very confident about being on video at all. So, what have you decided to go for? Well, I've got the, the view directly in front of me, which is uh, Wesley Church. A few of the buildings below, and the patchwork of fields uh, with the trees in the mid-ground. From about the mid-ground towards me, we've got the estuary and I've got uh, a big chunk of that is my um, frontispiece. Very nice. I've got French ultramarine. Yep. Some white. Yep. Uh, titanium white. Uh, Viridian hue. This uh, greenish yep. thing here, greeny blue. The red is cadmium red deep hue. Very nice. And of course the yellow is uh, cadmium yellow. Yep. Brilliant. Okay, well I'll leave you to it. I won't keep coming and pestering you, I promise. Okay, time to sketch in. I'm going to use a smaller uh, brush just to get started with that. So uh, just a number one brush. I'm going to um, Use my burnt sienna, sienna and a bit of ultramarine blue, I think, to start off with, just to get this going um, for the, the marking in. And then I think I'm going to go back to doing what I did previously, which was work from the sky down and in and, and take it from there. So um, let's see how this goes. <laughs> Okay, so here's what I'm thinking. Um, so I'm, I'm going to work these clouds in, um, bringing them in sort of in to this area here where the, the hills and swoop down in this mid ground section. Um, Insto itself with the houses is just in here, and again, that's a real challenge for me, so I'm going to have to be really careful with this. I'm going to try and put that boat in, so that's going to be interesting. And then it's going to swoop down in through here um, and then the green in the foreground here, the grass, it's just going to sort of allow us to sort of step into it. So uh, just um, again, mixing up my, my, my liquid into my paint and I caught this really cool comment from Anne Hyde Hi Anne, um, who basically said about um, when she uses liquid, even years later, she has trouble trying to remember the rule of only using 25% to volume of paint. I replied back saying, there's a rule? I had no idea. Do you know, I literally just picked up the, bought the liquid um, and just use it to thin the paint down. Um, but yeah, so apparently it can cause problems. So thanks for that, Anne. Um, that's a really cool uh, bit of advice, a really cool comment. And um, yeah, I haven't noticed it on any of the paintings I've worked with cracking or anything yet, but I guess if you overdo it, it potentially can do that. So thank you, Anne, for that. That's brilliant. Um, yeah, love that comment. So that's the sky in to start with. Um, now I'm going to look at this real, at, right at the back there, the background um, of the hills, which is sort of green and blue. So um, something I've picked up on recently is that if I now use the sky color, so if I go green, if I go yellow, so if I go yellow, that's gonna make it lighter, right? I don't want it lighter, do I? So do I have to put it, so I, I'll put more blue in. Right, okay, and then, then I'm sort of getting this, this sort of darker, bluer, faded, a bit more, something like that perhaps. Would that be right? So there we go, that's that, that's pushed into the back there. Um, I possibly could 
possibly could do with being a little bit bluer. Um, I guess I might just try that. So I'm working my way down my painting uh, with large brush strokes uh, today, but let's go and have a look and see if Mike's still there. He might have done a runner. You never know. No, he's still there. Let's go and see how he's getting on. I used this uh, viewfinder to set up. Yep. And I decided on this sort of split. So I've got uh, the shoreline almost halfway up the canvas. And I've got the church pretty close to the top. So um, allows me a bit of cloud here. And uh, on the using the viewfinder, I'd actually cut the scene off about there. Right. Yeah. Um, but when I started painting, I, I realised that um, I was getting the proportions wrong, and I've ended up with a lot more of the scene than I intended. However, it is it is beautiful, and I, I'm loving it. Just the, I mean, I know you're kind of just you're still sort of piecing in, but just the difference in the colours and just all around everything about it, even in there. You know, you could leave that as it is, couldn't you? <laughs> I'm still feeling like that. So. <laughs> yeah, I didn't mean it like that. <laughs> but you know, it's 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 beautiful. Yeah. yeah. It's time for another coffee, I think. I think it is. Do we have a coffee? Yeah, let's do a coffee. <laughs> yeah, well, yeah. Here we are. Lovely. Anyway, right. shall we? Cheers. Yep, cheers. Cheers. So those birds in the sky actually aren't birds, they're flies. Um, they they've decided to jump in on the picture. I'm hoping they'll fly off. Um, I just I just thinking it's great work painting with someone else. It's a really nice. It's different. It's a nice feeling because you get chances, and we've been doing quite a bit of it off camera. But we get chances just to discuss how we feel about our paintings and how things are going and what works and what doesn't work. And it's so interesting because you know we have a lot a similar similar sort of level of of uh, problems and challenges along the way and that one that Mike had there of sort of the composition getting the composition squeezed in wrong and sort of uh, yeah I mean how many times have I done that already it it's amazing that you know that's how it works but I really am grateful for him for coming out today and also for being brave enough to kind of let me video his work and to chat to him whilst he's painting because um, I've got to be honest if I'd, I would have been uncomfortable if it was the other way around, um, you know, so what a great sport he is. So thank you, Mike. Um, but yeah, this is brilliant. And I'm really enjoying, I'm really enjoying the company and I'm really just enjoying the day. It's, it's really great. So uh, <laughs> these flies, they're not going. Um, so anyway, just to go back to what I'm doing here, I've kind of patched in the bits that I wanted to do along here. And now, so the next step for me is to try and get a bit of green in before I start brushing in, getting in some water and stuff in there. So I've just, I've just had a blob of um, a burnt sienna on there and I thought, well, it, I can't, there's no way I'm going to make that look like a house with a brush like that. No, what number of brush is that? Uh, hmm, good question. Ten. Ten. Yeah. yeah. So I thought I'm going to use one of these. I purposely bought these because I've had success with them before, but I can take some of the paint off to lighten it up yeah and that's your that's giving you the light and, and the shade the then isn't it from the the sun in this direction perfect that's that's a that's a tip because yeah. they're called are they called q-tips 
I, I think that's probably a manufacturer's name. Oh, okay. But uh, yeah, yeah, useful. Other buds are available. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, look at that. So, disaster, without thinking about it, what I've actually gone and done is I've put the boat slap bang in the middle. Oh, look, now typical, Mike's turned up. <laughs> what do you think, Mike? I've just gone and made a bit of a mistake. The it's only thing I'm... smack in the middle, is it? Well, it's no. What I, would, what I think I'd do is make, make it a little bit longer that way. Sorry, mate? Make the boat a little bit longer that way. Ah. Which would tend to push it over that way a little bit. Genius. Yeah, so if I take it, if I take it across here, then it's not centre, is it? No. Yes. Thank you. You see, I've got lots of flies. Have you got flies on yours yet? Yeah, no, I haven't seen any of those. Well, it must, the oils I have must be attracting them. There. Oh, right. <laughs> Do a lot of this. Oh, just thinking about that idea of Mike's to just extend the boat. Yeah, if I... I guess if I push it that way, extend it this way like so, and this is literally just marking it in for a second. Yeah, so just extending it this way, it's slightly more of center now, which will allow me to, which, you know, makes it a bit better. And I think I will, with one of those boats, I'm gonna put one in there at the back there. But um, yeah, pallet knife, pallet knife. Just closing in now we're going to go last got another, about another 20 to 50 minutes left so I tried to break up the line of the houses a little up here i've still got a bit of the green to bring in the foreground here um, maybe another boat still to put in um, but slowly but surely i'm kind of getting to a place where i'm going to be happy to finish for today uh, it's coming along nicely um yeah so uh final push charge Okay, so um, here's, we, we finished for the day. Uh, I just popped around to say, oh, let's critique our pictures for the day. Uh, and he's already packed away, because he's super organized. That's what that is. Um, so, we're gonna, so we're gonna have a look at mine now. Um, I gotta say, I'm quite, I'm quite pleased with that actually, Mike. Um, we, we have actually been stood here for a minute talking about it. There was a number of things um, that I sort of said. Interestingly enough, when we looked at the actual, the actual, um, the view in front of us um, it's clear to see that I've done that thing again I do this a lot Mike where I just tip the paper tip the canvas almost the composition so it's almost like it's always sliding off the page rather okay, than yeah. so like you said here about the the what are they called the mask <laughs> thanks <laughs> so I can edit that out <laughs> I can make myself sound really professional so the masks um, were actually one of them is virtually at the top of the hill so that goes to show how much my perspective is out um, and so I, I struggle with things like that quite a lot I'm using pallet knives um, to pull out different bits and pieces and if I get in close you can really see there's some really nice sort of there's another fly um, <laughs> That's a bird. It's in, I just, it's in the sky. Yeah, see how realistic it is. <laughs> yeah, look at that. That's actually a bird. If you go up close, it's a seagull. Um, I love these strokes that these these marks that come out, and that's something that I'm really getting excited about every time I use a palette knife. So um, it's it's working out quite nicely. And I think the, the from what you had there just a few moments ago that you created with the palette knife. Although you haven't, uh, you haven't got a small brush or anything to fix it. You, there, there's enough detail there now to for you to appreciate what it is. I, I, really, really clever, I think. Well, thank you. I mean, I did a similar sort of thing when I was out um, with some paintings at, with Clovelly, 
and just that little bit of white in the yeah. in in between the you know the in the hillside just makes a difference and obviously there's a little bit more going on in there and just to break up because obviously with a palette knife it comes out as lines but just to break it up just dropped a brush of gr a touch of green in between every now and then and it's just sort of broken up the line a little bit yeah. and that's literally all I've all I've done with that and then to finish with this boat which I struggled with um, I drew I that's the end of the brush I just scratched out the the paint at the end and that's come out that's come out quite nice too yeah it's a really good uh, definition of, of the boat in front of you it's really good because the, the the bow has been chopped off that boat yeah uh, I don't know why they did it but it used to be up at um, Bankside by Biddeford oh, okay and it had been standing there for a long time and I think the council um, eventually towed it along here and dumped it there but um, <laughs> the uh, the bows for some reason was cut off. It was quite an elaborate um, bow, but it was cut off and I think, I'm pretty certain that boats are dumped here as markers for the channel. Yeah, that would make sense, wouldn't it? Because yeah. obviously you get bigger ships coming through there yeah, that's it. When, it's, when, when, the tides, when the tide's in. Beautiful down here, Mike. Thank you so much for bringing me. My pleasure. Uh, there's Mike. What a legend. <laughs> oh, thank you so much. Yeah, it's actually been a really cool day. I've yeah, loved it. So have I. Um, so thanks a lot and uh, thanks guys thanks for Thank watching you. and um, yeah well here we are another painting another day awesome stuff I've really enjoyed it plain air painting if you haven't done it before get out and do it and as Mike proved you can build your own easel which I'm well jealous of actually because it looks so much lighter than mine and um, you can just crack on with it so uh, yeah thanks for watching guys and I'll see you again soon bye Thanks for watching and if you enjoyed this or any of my other videos there are a number of ways you can support me in the future. Like, share and subscribe and don't forget to hit the notification bell. And now you can even donate on my Buy Me A Coffee page. As you can see from my new videos, I love coffee. But your donation will do more than just keep me full of caffeine. Every donation will go straight into buying new art materials for future projects so your help will be truly appreciated. It's easy to use. Simply follow the link and you can donate as little as two pounds to help out. Feel free to leave a comment and there's even a link to my website. Your support really does go a long way to helping me to create more art in the future. Thanks.